Hi, everyone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And good morning and good afternoon to all the viewers from all over the world, especially from the UK. I'm Justina from the Federation of Hong Kong Industry, your MC today. I would like to welcome all of you to our very first Hong Kong and UK webinar on opportunities for UK graduates in Hong Kong, Springboard to Greater Bay Area. To the live stream the webinar, we feature representatives from the government, industry, and professional sectors to share their insights on the career's prospect of international graduates in Hong Kong, as well as in the Greater Bay Area and ASEAN markets. The webinar today is co-organized by FHKI and University of Warwick. To start with, I would like to introduce FHKI to you all. The Federation of Hong Kong Industry, FHKI, was established in 1960 by ordinance. As one of the four major chambers of commerce in Hong Kong, FHKI brings together like-minded entrepreneurs to spearhead the advancement of Hong Kong industry through policy advocacy, professional business support services, and cross-sector collaboration, FSKI strives to build a dynamic industrial ecosystem to take forward transformation and reindustrialization of Hong Kong's economy, sparking new business opportunities and charting diverse paths for the younger generation. And also, I would like to welcome all our distinguished speakers today, including Dr. Daniel Yip, Chairman of Federation of Hong Kong Industry, and also Dr. Jimmy Tiang, Associate Director General of Invest Hong Kong, and also Ms. Catherine Zhang, Tax Partner of PwC Hong Kong, Mr. Edward Chen, Assistant Director of Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks Inno Academy. And also Mr. Shervin Sharji, CEO and Founder of EcoBricks Limited. Once again, I would like to thank you all of you for joining us today. So without further ado, we will now turn the time over to Dr. Jimmy Tiang, Associate Director General of Investment Promotion, Business Development of Invest Hong Kong, who is overseeing more than 30 overseas and mainland offices, as well as the business function of aftercare, consulates and chamber engagement, Greater Bay Area business development and talent attraction. Dr. Chiang is going to share on how HASAL government supports foreign business in Hong Kong. Dr. Chiang, please. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are. Uh, first of all, I would like to say a big thank you to uh, FXKI, uh, Chairman Yip for inviting Invest Hong Kong to attend this webinar today uh, to share with you some updates about the Hong Kong and GBA business environment. Um, so Invest Hong Kong, it's the investment promotion agency of the Hong Kong SAR government dedicated to supporting foreign companies in setting up and expanding their businesses in Hong Kong so really happy to be here today. Um, in the next 15 minutes, uh, what I would like to do is to, first of all, give you an overview of the business landscape in Hong Kong, and then discuss a little bit about uh, some latest economic developments uh, in Hong Kong and the GBA, and the resulting business opportunities. And finally, uh, I'll introduce some of our services for foreign companies and investors, and also talents. So the business landscape in Hong Kong, uh, first of all, I would like to emphasize that Hong Kong is truly an international business city. Um, according to our annual survey, more than 9,000 Foreign companies were operating in Hong Kong last year, up 10% against 2017. And among all these foreign companies in Hong Kong, about 1,500 were actually regional headquarters, and the number increased 6% from 2017 to 
compared with 2017. And of course, our foreign companies in Hong Kong are coming from all over the world, uh, but our top five markets are respectively mainland China, Japan, US, UK. UK rank actually number four uh, in terms of uh, the importance of our FDI source. And then it's Singapore. So a lot of UK companies operating in Hong Kong. Many British professionals are working here, actually. And what about our startup ecosystem? It's growing pretty fast in recent years. Uh, according to our statistics, last year, 3,360 3, startup companies were operating in Hong Kong up 51% against 2017. It's a very phenomenal increase. And also, more than one quarter of our startup founders in Hong Kong are actually coming from outside Hong Kong, from places like mainland China, UK, US, Australia, etc. And these companies are engaged in sectors like fintech, which is very popular uh, as a sector uh, by our startups. Actually, we are having more than 600 fintech companies in Hong Kong right now. Other popular sectors include e-commerce, uh, professional services, IT, data analytics, and so on. And then as of today, Hong Kong is home to eight unicorns. Uh, four of them are related to fintech, Lala Move, Google X, a transportation related, since time that's AI, and Kluk is a travel tech company. So hopefully we are gonna see more unicorns uh, to emerge in Hong Kong. So in order to support the development of our startup ecosystem, Invest Hong Kong organizes two flagship events every year. And one of them is the Start Me Up Hong Kong Festival. And our event this year actually was held last month, end of May, which attracted almost 250,000 viewers to our virtual conferences, exhibitions, and business matching meetings. It's a great platform for global startup companies to get connected with potential business partners and investors. Another event that we do is the Hong Kong FinTech Week. It's similar to the Start Me Up Hong Kong Festival, but focuses on FinTech because Hong Kong is just well positioned so much to develop FinTech being an international financial center. And our next Hong Kong FinTech Week will be held on the 1st to the 5th of November and being a hybrid event. So hopefully uh, we can do it in both virtual and physical format this time. And as part of the Hong Kong FinTech Week, the Global Fast Track Program is already open for applications by innovative fintech companies from all over the world. So once accepted, the fintech companies can get support on business matching to potential partners and investors. So if you are operating in this space, please check it out. This may be something beneficial for you and your company to speed up your growth in Asia, particularly. And now I would like to really talk a little bit about the GBA. And you may have heard about uh, where it is. But just to refresh your memory, the GBA, the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, its full name comprises Hong Kong, Macau, the two special administrative regions of China, and also nine different cities in the Guangdong province near the Pearl River. It's probably the wealthiest region in China with a total population of 86 million people and a combined GDP 
1.6 trillion US dollars, comparable to that of Australia and or Spain. So it's really a fast growing region in, in China. And now the IMF also forecast that the GDP of the GBA will grow from today's 1.6 trillion to 4.6 trillion by 2030, representing almost a 200% increase in like 10 years time. So a lot of new opportunities will emerge in the next 10 years or so, benefiting you know, different sectors. And more importantly, is now a national policy to develop the GBA into a modern city cluster, focusing a lot on innovation and technology, advanced manufacturing, high value added services industries, and also sustainability. So you see new policy measures being introduced from time to time from now on to support the GBA development. As I said, the GBA development will benefit a lot of different sectors in Hong Kong. One of them is certainly financial services. It's, it's, the, it's one of the pillar industries for Hong Kong. And with GBA development, this sector will certainly be further strengthened. And for example, a new program called the Wealth Management Connect is going to be launched very soon. This allows mainland residents living in the GBA to purchase financial products offered by banks in Hong Kong and vice versa. So we expect this will create tremendous business opportunities for the financial services sector in Hong Kong. And this has given a very fast growing demand of for high quality wealth management services in mainland China. And likewise, we expect more family offices from mainland China will come to Hong Kong to set up their presence because of this new initiative. And also, there will be more opportunities in the innovation and technology sector as one of the GBA's uh, development objectives is to develop itself into a global INT hub. And the Hong Kong government is very serious about uh, promoting developing INT and has already invested some 13 billion US dollars or 9 billion pounds in this regard just over the last few years. For example, to uh, encourage more R&D in Hong Kong support our startups, nurture talent, as well as strengthen our infrastructure like Science Park and Cyberport. And I'm sure that my colleague Edward from the Science Park will explain in greater detail to you about the exciting developments in our INT sector later on. And given Hong Kong's core business strengths, including our strategic location at the heart of Asia, our strong institutions supported by one country, two systems, and a very competitive and simple tax regime, which I'm sure Catherine from PwC will explain to you in detail later on, Hong Kong will not only play an important role in the GBA development, but will also be the best gateway for international companies British companies to access the GBA. So how Invest Hong Kong supports foreign companies or talents? For international companies looking to set up their presence in Hong Kong, Invest Hong Kong provide them with a wide range of investment support services which are free of charge, tailor-made to suit their particular business needs. For example, in terms of provision of market information to support your feasibility study, um, introduction to potential business partners, professional service providers, and also 
facilitation on your applications for work visas or business licenses, PR and marketing support on your business launch, etc. And we certainly introduce various government funding schemes and support programs to you. Um, at Invest Hong Kong, we don't administer any funding scheme ourselves, but there are lots of funding schemes operated by other government departments or agencies. And it's our responsibility to introduce these programs to you, uh, which may be relevant to your business. And there are just too many of these uh, programs. Uh, the programs that you see on the slide are not exhaustive. And honestly, I'm not familiar with all of them. But just to give you a few examples, uh, for example, if you are engaging in R&D activity, then there is this uh, enterprise support scheme that will provide funding support for your R&D work, up to 10 million Hong Kong dollars. And if you are a fast growing startup looking for some additional capital, you can leverage the government's Innovation and Technology Venture Fund, which provides investment funds from the government and the private sector through VCs to support your companies. And if you would like to, after setup in Hong Kong, expand your businesses to mainland China or other parts of the world, you can utilize our BUD fund or our export marketing fund, which provides funding support for you to develop new markets, to do sales and branding in other foreign markets. And how we support individual talents are, if you're interested in uh, looking for career opportunities in Hong Kong, come speak to us. Uh, we're happy to introduce you to career opportunities in Hong Kong in various sectors, uh, connect you with recruitment agencies or other government agencies which present uh, career opportunities in various sectors and also we support you in terms of your settling down in Hong Kong. If you need to find apartments or if you have kids looking for international schools, we can provide this sort of facilitation. And just to share that, uh, obviously certain sectors in Hong Kong are more in need of overseas talent. And the government has identified 11 of such sectors. So talent from these sectors will be given extra points if they apply for our quality migrant admission scheme uh, to come to Hong Kong. So just to conclude, uh, there are many business and career opportunities in Hong Kong. And Invest Hong Kong is here to support you to capitalize these exciting opportunities, especially given the GBA development. So whether you are interested in creating your own startups in Hong Kong or looking for career opportunities here, we hope we have something to offer. So if there's anything we can help, please feel free to contact me or my colleague Alison in Hong Kong. If you're based in the UK, please don't hesitate to contact my colleague Andrew, who is based in London. So thank you very much, and we look forward to getting in touch and providing assistance. Thank you very much, Dr. Chan. Thank you. Please be seated. So now may I introduce Ms. Catherine Zhang, tax partner of PwC Hong Kong. Catherine is a tax partner in China Tax and Business Advisory Division based in Shenzhen with over 25 years consulting experience. With wide knowledge of the tax and foreign investment regulations, Catherine has been providing a full range of tax and business advisory services to multinational and domestic corporations on inbound and outbound investment. She is going to share some practical information on tax-related issues when setting up business in Hong Kong. Catherine, please. Thank you. Thank you for um, FHKI inviting PricewaterhouseCoopers to sh having uh, sharing sections of uh, setting up a presence in Hong Kong. Um, just heard from Jimmy, seems there are lots of incentives and um, 
I think it's the program to help to attract those talents from overseas and then setting up their uh, business or their presence in Hong Kong. So when you are interested to um, have a presence in Hong Kong, what you need to do is at least you have to have a company or you are being employed by a, a presence in Hong Kong. So today is I'm going to share how you're, if you're going to set up a, a company in Hong Kong, what, you know, what factors and also the areas that you have to take into consideration before you um, uh, have the uh, applications to be, uh, to be filled and to be arranged. It. So, okay, setting up our company in Hong Kong. So, um, in Hong Kong, uh, we all know that we have a very mature financial and legal system. In fact, uh, we are adopting the common law, so um, the students in UK definitely will be very familiar with it. So, um, and again, uh, Hong Kong have a very active capital markets and um, a low financing cost. When talking about the capital markets, we are very, you know, um, we have a lot of, you know, IPO cases in Hong Kong every year. We have a lot of, you know, bond issuance, and also we have a lot of loan financing that arranged it in Hong Kong. So um, again, uh, regarding the loan financing, we have a very low financing cost comparing with other countries, you know, in the Southeast Asia and also um, in other countries. So um, Jimmy just mentioned that we have a, in Hong Kong we have a very simple uh, tax regime and systems, and in fact we also um, have a very low uh, tax rates, uh, both for the corporations and also for the individuals. And uh, Hong Kong is a free trade port. It means that um, uh, there's no particular boundaries, uh, no restrictions of uh, you know importing and exporting the goods from and uh, in and out Hong Kong. We don't have any foreign exchange control, um, unlike the, uh, some of the other countries, like uh, uh, it, they have uh, some restrictions on the foreign exchange. In mainland, again, we also have some, some rules about the foreign exchange control. Um, for the setting up the company, we have a very simple procedures and uh, low cost uh, for setting up the companies. Even uh, you can do it online for setting up the companies in Hong Kong. And uh, particularly, there is no capital, registered capital requirements well, if you are going to have your own companies here. Um, so um, Hong Kong, uh, geographical-wise, uh, it is a very convenient uh, spot. Uh, it is uh, well connected with the Southeast Asia, uh, as well as we have a very uh, well, you know, infrastructures connected with the mainland China as well. So um, that's why we're always emphasizing on, uh, particularly with the mainland China, we have a one hour, you know, um, uh, living cycle. So uh, it is easily, you know, reached uh, to the GBA cities that just uh, mentioned by Jimmy within an hour or, you know, an hour, 15 minutes, something like that. So um, in fact, I'm based in Shenzhen. Uh, my uh, working uh, location is in Shenzhen, but I am living in Hong Kong. So I commute every day, in fact. So my family are based in Hong Kong, but I commute to Shenzhen for, for my working every day uh, you know, during the past 15 years. So this is very convenient. So um, setting up uh, Hong Kong, you know, a company in Hong Kong, there are a few you know, factors that you, you have to know about it. Um, the, uh, for incorporations of the company, it's quite simple. You just need to do a registrations with the company registry uh, and do the business registration and get your business license. So as I mentioned, that uh, basically you are allowed to do online registrations right now. This is a very, uh, this is a form filling. Uh, you just provide all the details and um, you know, the information and then the, the company can be formed within uh, one or two days. So um, the incorporation prerequisites, uh, in fact, there are not much uh, uh, incorporation prerequisites in Hong Kong. Um, you only needed to uh, have your, the directors, uh, the appointment of the directors, and also the company secretary, and uh, how many shares that you are going to issue. And uh, the most important, uh, I think the most critical thing is, is to open the bank account for the operations. But we all know that uh, given there is a KYC requirements, not just in Hong Kong, but elsewhere in the world. So it, it is right now, it is, um, you, you need to spend uh, quite uh, you know, um, uh, a day to, to have the account to be opened in Hong Kong or in elsewhere. 
for operations purpose. So um, there are, once you set up the company, and then there, uh, you will have some annual compliance requirements uh, or maintenance, including you have to file the annual return, um, the, uh, the annual general meetings that you have to arrange it in Hong Kong, and annual accounts and the director's report. And uh, because this is a corporation, this is a company, then you have to uh, fulfill the annual uh, profits tax return uh, filing requirements. Uh, as well as there is uh, employer's returned filing requirements. So these are, uh, uh, as you can see, it is quite simple, very straightforward, uh, you know, procedures for setting up a company in Hong Kong. So talking about the systems, the taxation systems, um, the regimes in Hong Kong, um, you can see we have a very simple uh, tax regime and systems, relatively low tax rates. Um, for the income tax, uh, we have profits tax, uh, salaries tax and property tax. For non-income tax, we have some duty and the other, you know, um, not, you know, uh, like the betting tax, but um, for those, uh, you, know, you know, entrepreneurs, normally we will uh, focusing on the profits tax and salaries tax and the stamp duty. So uh, Hong Kong, we adopt, uh, we call it territorial source basis. So uh, anything that um, we call the incomes that derived it in Hong Kong will be subject to Hong Kong tax. And then uh, for the offshore source of income, basically in principle, it should not be taxed in Hong Kong. So the, um, there's no tax on the dividend income and also the capital gain. We are exempted uh, from, it is both the dividend income and also the capital gain will be exempted from the Hong Kong tax. No turnover tax, uh, we don't have any VAT or GST or consumption tax. And uh, we don't have any withholding income tax that on dividend and interest uh, that received it from overseas. Uh, as well as the management fee, if you provide any services, um, you know, if you receive any services fee that relating to the services that provided in Hong Kong, yes, you are subject to the Hong Kong tax. But the services, if they are provided, say, for example, in other jurisdictions and other countries, uh, in principle, that it should be classified as offshore and not be subject to tax in Hong Kong. And we don't have any three capitalizations rules that means that we don't, uh, you know, we don't have any uh, restrictions on the uh, loan financing for your business in Hong Kong. And uh, we don't uh, impose any tax on the divestment. If there's any divestment, basically uh, you just need to you know, um, uh, terminate all the contracts and then deregister the company. Instead, we don't have any tax on those divestment arrangements. And uh, for very... Uh, uh, complicated transactions that the IRD, the Indian Revenue Departments in Hong Kong, they welcome those uh, advanced ruling. Um, so to uh, basically to uh, have a very certain tax positions in Hong Kong for the for the business activities that ranged it here. So um, when talking about the, the rate, uh, because uh, as I mentioned, there is a relatively low tax rate in Hong Kong. So um, for the corporations that, um, for the first two million accessible profits, which means the income um, deduct all the allowable expenses, or al allowable deductible expenses, then for the corporations, the, uh, the first two million dollar, you will be taxed at 8.25%. Uh, for those two million above, it will be taxed at 16.5%. So there are two levels. Uh, one, one is below two million, the other is uh, uh, you know, two, two millions above. Uh, for the unincorporated business, which is like the partnership, sole proprietorships, um, then tax rate will be uh, for the first two million, it is 7.5%, and for the, uh, for the two million above, which is 15%. So for those entrepreneurs, if it is just uh, an individual, maybe likely they will setting up a partnership or we call it a sole proprietorship. If that is the case, then the tax rate will be uh, as low as 15%. For the service tax, um, if you are being employed by uh, a companies in Hong Kong, then the, the income, you know, the employment income will be subject to the service tax. For the service tax, uh, we have uh, two different uh, systems. One is called progressive rate. The other is called standard rate. So for the standard rate, it is kept at 15%. For the progressive rate, it is 2% 2, 2 to 70%. But in anyhow, um, the, the tax will only be kept at 15 So if the if the tax that calculated uh, with the progressive tax rate is 
less than the standard rate, then you are going to be, to be taxed with the progressive tax rate. So this is the, the tax regime for the salary tax. For the property tax, if you have any, you know, uh, properties that rent out in Hong Kong, so you will be subject to the property tax at 15%, with, of course, uh, uh, of the, with the allowable deductions that are available. So um, because we are, uh, Hong Kong is as part of the GBA, so that's why today I also would like to share um, some, you know, details and uh, I would say comparisons uh, of, the, uh, of some details between, you know, Hong Kong and the mainland China. So for the time required for the incorporation, when you are setting up in Hong Kong, as I just mentioned, very short period of time, uh, likely less than a week. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, it can be as, as far as, as one or two days. So, uh, but in mainland China, because we have a lot of, you know, uh, registrations requirements and also the approvals requirements. So normally when we setting up a companies in China, in mainland China, uh, normally it takes about six weeks to eight weeks. And in some, uh, you know, in some cities, maybe as long as three months. Registered capital in Hong Kong, we don't have any um, our registered basic minimum registered capital requirement. Uh, in China, uh, in mainland China, uh, according to the company law, again, they don't have any uh, uh, capital requirement. But we all know that when you uh, would like to get the approval from the authorities, then they still will ask you how much that you are going to be invested into the companies. For the incorporations of the company um, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, you just need to do the registrations with the company registry and then get your business license. Um, but for um, setting up a companies in the mainland China, normally you have to go through uh, different um, authorities, including the Ministry of Commerce, uh, Administrations of Industry and Commerce, and uh, tax bureaus, everything. Then uh, all after the setting up of the company, you have also to go through record some sort of the post establishment registrations with different bureaus, including customs, uh, tax, uh, uh, foreign exchange control, uh, foreign exchange bureau, something like that. So that's why it takes uh, quite, you know, uh, two to three months to complete all the registration procedures in China. For the corporate income tax, uh, Hong Kong, we have our standard tax rate is 16.5%, but also we have some incentives available. Um, I just mentioned if it is below 2 million, basically it is 50% of the 16.5%. And also there are some um, incentives available for some specific industries like the leasing industry, like the insurance companies. So um, the, the tax rate will be much lower than 16.5%. And but in, uh, in mainland China, the um, standard uh, corporate income tax rate is 25%. But again, there are uh, quite a numbers of the incentives available. It's like uh, we call it uh, high technology, uh, taste, uh, high. Um, so for those industry, basically, if you are uh, uh, being qualified and you are earning the qualified income, then the tax rate will be as low as 15%. For the value added tax uh, in Hong Kong, we don't have any uh, VAT or GST. So um, any services that you performed, it, any income that you earned, it, you only need to pay the profit income tax. But in China, uh, for the VAT, we have a different uh, for different services or, or for different, you know, business activity, they charge different uh, the rates of the VAT, which is 6%, uh, 9%, or 13%, depending on the nature of the services and, uh, and also the business activities that are uh, uh, conducted. Individual income tax in Hong Kong um, comparatively very low because we kept at 15%. This is the maximum, uh, you know, uh, percentage of the uh, the standard uh, of the of the salary tax paid in Hong Kong, but in China, um, it, uh, the tax rate will be ranged from three percent to forty-five percent. So, um, but of course, they are again uh, because uh, with the high, you know, um, income tax rate, uh, the local governments in uh, mainland China also um, offer some incentives uh, to those overseas talents in some cities. So it's all depending on the qualifications of the individuals and also the, the local policies of the, the governments in that particular cities. Um, social security contributions um, in Hong Kong, we have the MPF mandatory. Provident fund, you are required that both employer and employee need to contribute. Um, same as in uh, mainland China, we have the social security and housing fund. But in Hong Kong, uh, because we, um, uh, they have a cap uh, for the MPF, but in China, normally the social security and housing fund uh, will be calculated based on the salaries that you earn. 
So, uh, compa you know, when comparing with uh, Hong Kong and uh, mainland China, basically the, the, the uh, social security contributions in mainland China normally will be much uh, slightly higher than in Hong Kong. Foreign exchange uh, restriction, again, Hong Kong, we don't have any uh, foreign exchange control. Uh, money uh, free flow from in and out Hong Kong. And, uh, but in mainland China, uh, we have a very stringent and rigid uh, foreign exchange control. So uh, money, if, if you really want to remit money out of China or in China, you have to go through a lot of uh, approval procedures and also uh, uh, to get the, uh, basically the, the green lights from the foreign exchange uh, bureaus and also the banks. Um, so um, this is uh, my sharing today. Um, if you have any questions, that basically we can cover it in the Q&A sessions. Thank you very much, Catherine. Please be seated. Thank you. So now, please join me in welcoming Mr. Edward Chen, Assistant Director of Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks Inno Academy. HASTB Inno Academy develops forward-looking learning and training programs to upskill talents for INT careers and draw more talents to join INT in Hong Kong. He's going to give us an overview on the INT development landscape in Hong Kong. Edward, please. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Edward from HKSTP, Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks. Thank you very much, Chairman Yip, as well as uh, FHKI, for inviting me today. So today, over the next 10 minutes, I wanted to give you a very quick overview of Hong Kong's innovation and technology development. So first of all, um, innovation and technology is a top priority of the Hong Kong government. So on this slide, you can see that um, the eight focus areas of all the um, government policies that aim to promote innovation and technology development in Hong Kong. And on the right, you see that the Hong Kong government has invested over 100 billion Hong Kong dollars into INT development. So it's a very big uh, commitment. Next, um, I do want to touch on why we are doing innovation and technology. Like many people know that Hong Kong is an international finance and business sector, but why innovation and technology? One big reason is that we have very good universities in our cities, in our city. Um, in fact, we have five universities that are among the top 100 around the world. You can see the details on this slide. And this, is, this very high density is unparalleled anywhere in the world, perhaps except London. So because we have such good universities, we have very good uh, research. And in fact, a lot of the tech companies here in Hong Kong are very research intensive, and um, including those in our technology park. So this slide is actually from Invest Hong Kong. <laughs> so this slide actually shows the makeup of the technology startups here in Hong Kong. And if you look at the top left corner, you can see the mix. Um, a lot of the startups here in Hong Kong are in FinTech, e-commerce, professional services, as well as uh, software, uh, computer um, uh, related sort of uh, services and products. So, and um, this slide, you can actually Google it online and you can see um, whatever you're interested in, there are startups doing those things in Hong Kong. So now going back to Hong Kong Science Park, where I'm from, um, HKSTP manages Hong Kong Science Park, and we are really Hong Kong's biggest R&D base. And this picture, you can see our iconic architecture, which we call the Golden Egg. Um, the reason that we have this structure is because the mission of our park is really to incubate technology companies, we want them to succeed. So that's why we have this golden egg, which is an auditorium, by the way, in the middle of our park. So um, this slide shows the map of Hong Kong. For those of you who have been to Hong Kong, we are right in the middle, uh, in Sha Tin, next to Chinese University of Hong Kong. That's where Hong Kong Science Park is located. Recently, there's been a lot of attention on the new technology park we are building which is the Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation and Technology Park um, across from Fu Tan District uh, in Shenzhen is located in the Loop um, in Hong Kong, Loop area in Hong Kong. And that park is actually four times the size of the current Hong Kong Science Park, which I will talk more um, about later. 
But many people also don't realize that Hong Kong's uh, HKSTP manages three industrial estates in Hong Kong. Uh, you can see it on the right. Um, the three industrial estates are located in Yunlong, Cheung Kwan O, and Tai Po. I'll talk more about those uh, later. So this slide shows um, sort of uh, the, the landscape of innovation and technology development here in Hong Kong Science Park. So um, right now, uh, we have over 1,000 technology companies, uh, big and small, in our science park. And our mix is very international. Uh, the startups, the tech companies come from 23 nations. Also, um, on the left, you can see that uh, we have over 14,000 people uh, working in our science park. So it's a pretty big um, community of talents. And um, on the right, you can see that this slide actually, uh, after I finished this slide, we realized that we have several more unicorns in Hong Kong Science Park now. So it's not just Sense Time and Lala Move, but we actually have just two more over the weekend. Uh, uh, Smart Mall, which is an AI computer vision company, as well as in Silicon Medicine, also an AI company, but uh, uh, focusing on drug discovery. So we have actually more than two now. And um, the other things that uh, Science Park does is to help companies raise money. So on the top right, uh, bottom right corner, you can see that we actually help uh, companies raise a lot of uh, investment capital. And every $1 that we put into companies, because we also run an investment fund, that actually can help the companies raise 10 times more uh, money from the private sector. So there's a leverage effect. And on the left, bottom left, um, uh, Jimmy talked about this earlier. If you're interested in setting up a startup in Hong Kong, we run one of the biggest tech incubators in Hong Kong. And our success rate is pretty high. Uh, over 80% of the tech companies, uh, 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 the startups that we incubated are still surviving. So, so um, um, they're pretty successful. So uh, this one, I won't go into detail, but this slide actually shows all the different programs and support that we offer to uh, entrepreneurs who want to set up their own company here in Hong Kong. And um, the other big development right, happening in Hong Kong Science Park is actually Inno Hong Kong. What is it? So this Inno Hong Kong initiative is actually an initiative uh, initiated by the Hong Kong government to draw internationally renowned universities to set up joint research labs here in Hong Kong Science Park, focusing on two areas healthcare technologies and AIR, which stands for artificial intelligence and robotics. So here actually there are lots of opportunities for researchers who want to develop their career in Hong Kong. Um, and um, I also want to draw your attention to InnoCell, which just opened uh, several months ago in April. So people know that um, finding an apartment in Hong Kong is not an easy job. So that's why we, um, uh, Built this really nice apartment building, especially for non-local innovation and technology talents. So you can see in the picture, it's not like a dormitory. It's actually very nice inside, very well designed. And so if you, um, we offer this below market rates uh, to international tech talents who work at science park companies. Um, and also, you, you don't know just save money, but you also save time because you can walk to work. So, of course, since uh, 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 we had a FHKI webinar, we must talk about reindustrialization as well. So earlier, I talked about the free industrial estates uh, operated by Hong Kong Science Park. So what we're trying to do is we want to bring more uh, skills uh, intensive or uh, more automated types of manufacturing back to Hong Kong to create more opportunities uh, for Hong Kong's young people as well as uh, diversifying our economy. So um, um, there's lots of interesting uh, things happening in this area as well. And to wrap up, I do want to talk about the uh, 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 Hong Kong Shenzhen Innovation and Technology Park. So as I said, it's four times the size of the Hong Kong Science Park. And this is really uh, a very important initiative to help Hong Kong become GBA's international innovation technology hub. And uh, we do anticipate more opportunities um, uh, going forward as we get more integrated with the Greater Bay Area. So to, uh, finally, I do want to wrap up uh, with uh, um, uh, what I do at Hong Kong Science Park 2. So uh, um, we run HKSCB Inno Academy. Basically, uh, we run different types of programs, especially for young talents like you guys. If you want to join the INT industry, you can uh, join our program as a way to enter the industry. For instance, we run a program called Technology Leaders of Tomorrow program, which is sort of like an 
management trainee program for the innovation and technology industry. So you get a very good salary, you get to intern at HKSTP and also work full time in an R&D role at a top HKSTP company. So the other thing I want to draw your attention to is our career expo. So we run this every year, typically around March and April. So this is the biggest tech recruiting fair in Hong Kong. So um, I think next year we will do it in uh, March and April. For those of you who are graduating, make sure you check out the tech opportunities there. So that's um, what I want to share today. We welcome you to follow us uh, on Facebook, Instagram as well. And I look forward to answering more questions during the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edward. Please be seated. Thank you. So now here comes to our 35 minutes panel discussion section. To all our viewers, if you have any question uh, for the panelists throughout this section, please feel free to enter, answer your question in the Q&A box. The panelists will answer your question right after this section. It is our honor to have Dr. Jimmy Tian from Invest Hong Kong and Ms. Catherine Zhang from PwC Hong Kong, Mr. Edward Chen from Hong Kong Science and, Te and Technology Parks, and Mr. Shravin Shargi, CEO and founder of EcoBricks Limited, a UK entrepreneur investing in EcoBricks to be a panelist. And we are delighted to have Dr. Daniel Yip, Chairman of Federation of Hong Kong Industry, to moderate this section. May I now pass the time to Dr. Yip and our panelists Please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for all the speakers for the uh, very uh, insightful, you know, input. So, uh, so let's start the panel discussion. So, first of all, I would like to ask Servin. You know, Servin, I know you're coming from England. You know, so uh, I know you are a I banker before. So, why you come to Hong Kong and uh, choose the uh, the startup of your own company? Can you let's say do three to f uh, five minutes to talk about? Your, your venture? <laughs> of course, yes. Um, and I think um, my first taste of Hong Kong was uh, with um, an investment bank. Um, and I, I transferred from the London office to the Hong Kong office. Um, and that was really where I first saw the, um, the entrepreneurial spirit that um, Hong Kong has and how it's differentiated from London and uh, other cities which I've um, visited and worked in. Um, so I moved back to London, um, and then I developed some ideas around um, my own business and venturing down the entrepreneurial path. Um, and immediately, the place that came to mind in terms of having a fantastic network, and by that I mean both the formal networks and also informal networks, um, was Hong Kong, uh, based on my experience. Um, and I'd spent uh, quite a bit of time in Singapore as well, um, which is also another uh, attractive venue in terms of a base in Asia. Um, but what really struck me about Hong Kong um, was its connectivity. Um, in terms of being connected not only to the Greater Bay Area, which is an immense opportunity and being a fantastic launch pad for that huge market, but also being fantastically connected to Southeast Asia as well. Um, and also to the UK, to the US. Um, so in that regard, it was unparalleled in terms of um, a, a place for me to think about incorporating my, my company here. Um, and again, get just giving some real world experience in terms of some of the topics that we talked about, um, the company registration, incorporation, um, and even the bank account opening was actually immensely easy. Um, funnily enough, my wife at the same time was setting up a company in the UK um, and going through the bank account opening process there. Um, she had several weeks head start on me, but I still managed to open my account <laughs> faster than she did. Uh, she was a little bit aggrieved about that, but um, that's the beauty of actually doing business in Hong Kong. Um, the, the path to getting all of those stepping stones in place and those administrative task completed is uh, fantastically easy uh, by comparison to, to the UK. Um, and in terms of um, some, another point which was made in terms of um, Hong Kong looking to broaden its businesses beyond the well-known financial industry and property industry, um, that was another thing which, which I found very attractive. And um, the support from both the government side, from the industrial side, from the um, from the business community has been really strong here. 
um, and it's helped me get my business off the ground here very quickly. Um, and to give a quick summary in terms of what um, I'm doing here, uh, it's, it's not the, the classic industry of fintech or um, AI, um, it's, it's an industrial uh, business, uh, which is essentially focusing on sustainable concrete and recycling. Um, so what we do, um, we take plastic bottles, um, any other type of waste plastic, and we manufacture uh, sustainable concrete with low carbon footprint um, for use in Hong Kong. And something which a lot of people are surprised about and ask me um, it, you know, it, it, why um, I, I chose to do this is actually manufacturing in Hong Kong. Um, now, Hong Kong is not known as a manufacturing hub. It's, um, you know, people envisage it as a financial center and nothing beyond that. But actually, there's a big focus on um, bringing in innovative technologies, not only digital, but also industrial and real world. Um, so that, again, you know, a lot of people find surprising, but you know, Hong Kong is much more multifaceted in terms of the industries it is trying to incubate and engender and develop, um, because it is going to be a very important part of this much bigger um, Greater Bay Area, and having that kind of know-how and knowledge base here in Hong Kong uh, is very valuable. Thank you, Sherwin. You know, so uh, may I ask Jimmy? You know, so uh, so what are the common problems you know faced by the foreign students? You know, when they work or start a business in Hong Kong, how, how could they overcome this? Uh, that's a good question, Chairman Yip. Uh, I think for companies or entrepreneurs, uh, obviously, um, you know, lacking the uh, needed market information, it's often one of the challenges uh, they face when uh, setting up a company in Hong Kong. Um, so that's why uh, we, we try to uh, solve that problem to some extent for our entrepreneurs, startup companies, by helping them uh, get a better understanding of the business landscape in Hong Kong, uh, what are some of the relevant uh, rules and regulations for their particular types of business, uh, cost estimates, uh, how much does it cost to set up a small office in Hong Kong, um, and also for each uh, business sector, we have a sector specialist based in Hong Kong to provide more accurate and in-depth uh, information about the situation of a particular industry. So we try to solve that problem to some extent uh, for, for our incoming investors. And then secondly, uh, it's about our connections. I think um, Hong Kong is a small city. Sometimes I, th I tend to think everybody knows er everyone else in, in the city. Um, so, and it's easy to uh, um, develop networks in Hong Kong. So uh, that's why we, we also try to introduce, for example, uh, business service providers like accounting firms, advisory firms like PwC to our <coughs> investors to help them with certain uh, business needs and also potential business partners uh, introduce various industry stakeholders to them. Uh, to help them grow their personal networks in Hong Kong, which will help them set up in Hong Kong more effectively and more efficiently. And for both uh, entrepreneurs and professionals looking to uh, come to Hong Kong to work, I think uh, uh, I also have to admit that property prices in Hong Kong are not cheap. Um, it's often not the cheapest place in the world to uh, to rent an office space or find an apartment. So for these, uh, I would suggest uh, our British uh, professionals, uh, you, you may have to be psychologically prepared <laughs> uh, living in Hong Kong, and you may have to live in a smaller apartment than what you're living in in the, in the UK, for example, wherever you are, um, and of course, if you look at a lot of international surveys, uh, Hong Kong almost always tops the charts 
in terms of uh, real estate prices, uh, but actually people tend to pick the, the most expensive That's locations right, yes, to yes. Uh, do the surveys. Uh, but when it comes to finding an apartment, there are actually uh, areas in Hong Kong where uh, property quality is pretty high, but uh, rental costs is more manageable. And it's, obviously it's not at the downtown city center area, but a public transport system is quite efficient. And you, know, you take the MTR, uh, so even if it's you know, not really centrally located, but it's still pretty convenient, 30 minutes uh, you know, commuting back and forth to work <coughs> in, in your plates, and you pay more affordable rent. And so this is also important for them to, uh, to uh, do more research, uh, to look at more options, and we are here to supply this kind of information. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jimmy. Actually, uh, I, I want to comment on several points that uh, Jimmy makes. First of all, Hong Kong is uh, it's rather small, you know, so networking is very easy. I, I totally agree. For example, uh, Federation, you know, we have uh, 32 groups of uh, different industries. So, uh, so, so as you can see, you know, you come to our Federation, you know, and you meet uh, mostly, you know, almost all the industries in Hong Kong, you know, and then you get connect to each other, you know, very quickly. The second thing is about the, uh, the rentals, you know. I, I do agree, you know, Hong Kong is not cheap, but it's not too expensive. If you compare to London, you know, I mean, I think maybe, you know, in general, we, we might be a little bit cheaper than London in general, you know, because I, I do know the uh, London quite well, you know. So, so, okay, so let's jump to the next subject, you know. I, I want to ask Catherine, you know, uh, we talked about many good things about Hong Kong, you know, but can you share, you know, so what kind of uh, uh, mistakes, you know, that uh, some foreign companies would make when they come to Hong Kong when they start up their company, you know? Okay. Um very difficult questions <laughs> because we picked the, the errors. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, I think uh, for the entrepreneur, particularly for those new graduate people, they may not, uh, although it is very uh, simple, you know, do the registrations or all those stuff, but when we are talking about the annual compliance requirements like the annual returns, uh, the corporate uh, income tax return, the employer's returns and employer's returns, those are the, the things that they miss out. Uh, particularly when things happen, they are focusing on the business instead of those compliance matters. So um, that's also the beauty in Hong Kong because I in fact, you are quite easily to find a professional, you know, uh, to help you to dealing with those uh, compliance requirements and also the compliance matters. And uh, the, the fee they charge us is, is not as high as in UK. Because we, um, again, I, I, I know the UK market, uh, for those you know, accountants and also for those advisors, they charge quite a, a substantial amount of money. But in Hong Kong, you can find a very reasonable pricing for the services that we mentioned. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I, I totally agree with Catherine. You know. So uh, 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 we have certain level of compliances, but Hong Kong actually is a very resilient place. No, I think, I think through the uh, uh, discussion with uh, with the professionals and the government authorities, I think many things you know are, are very easy you know to settle. Okay, I would like to ask Edward a question. You know, uh, frankly speaking, you know, I, I think uh, Science Park has done a great job, you know, mm -hmm. to house many many uh, uh, new startup company, even some uh, like uh, unicorn companies. Can you share with us the employment opportunities? in Hong Kong, particular in Science Park, you know, what kind of uh, uh, people you are looking at, what, what particular type of industry that you think is the most as attractive to the young people, you know? Sure, absolutely. So uh, allow me to use our Career Expo as an example. So the Career Expo, as I said, is the biggest tech recruiting fair in Hong Kong, organized by us. So actually this year, we have 21,000, uh, 2,100 jobs uh, open. And a vast majority of those jobs are in three areas, uh, AI, data, and biomedical sciences. And among those jobs, vast majority are tech jobs, like the engineers, the developers, et cetera. But we also have quite a lot of uh, non-tech jobs, like business development, marketing, design. So it's really across the board. And every day, companies are telling us that they need people. So we have a lot of opportunities that we welcome all of you from the UK to consider joining us um, the company is located in our park. Edward, can you share with me how many uh, non-Chinese people working in, uh, I mean, non-Hong Kong people working in Science Park? 
Sure. So um, now we have uh, 14,000 people working in Science Park in total. So 75% are Hong Kong people, and the rest are local. Uh, uh, no, uh, the rest are non-local. Oh, so mainland so one, China. one quarter is non-locals. Huh? Yeah, well, that's quite yeah, a big exactly. percentage. Yes. Yeah. So one, one more follow-on questions. You know. Uh, okay. Although we we talk about you know rental is still relatively uh, acceptable in Hong mm. Kong, but do you have any other facilities to help the young people when they first come to Hong Kong? that you can help them to uh, resolve the, uh, the housing problem? Yeah, so other than the inno cell uh, facility that I mentioned uh, in my presentation, actually for non-local talents, if they manage to be hired by a uh, company located in our park, they can apply for accommodation subsidy if they decide not to stay in, uh, in inno cell, right? They can use that subsidy to rent apartments elsewhere in Hong Kong. Um, so that's number one. And number two, um, I think our environment is quite unique in Hong Kong in the sense that it's not like an urban jungle. We have a very nice environment, like we are next to the uh, ha harbour. So, so people can run and cycle, uh, very nice working and living environment. And, and um, um, that's, I think, another draw uh, for people to work there, work here, and they can access the rest of Hong Kong very easily. And um, as Jimmy said, we work very closely to invest Hong Kong. So for talents who want to relocate to Hong Kong, totally can work with us and invest Hong Kong so that you can get settled as soon as possible. Yeah. Thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, Sherwin, okay. Everybody consider Hong Kong is like a, it's like a city, you know, right? So not much life in here, you know, it's all high, high rises, you know. Can you comment, you know, do you think so, you know, or, or what do you do on the weekend? No, I'm, you know? I'm glad you asked that question um, because I think what if we're, we're obviously talking about work, 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 um, which is uh, the subject of this webinar, but um, lifestyle is equally important, if not more so. Um, and one of the things I, I love about Hong Kong is um, what, what you allude to is it's not the concrete jungle that people envisage it to be. Um, you have obviously the central area where people are familiar and has, they have all the uh, famous and familiar sky rises, um, but uh, within 15 minutes, 20 minutes from the central area, you can be in the middle of a jungle, um, trekking um, from where I live, uh, which is uh, probably door to door from the central area, 35 to 40 minutes by public transport. Um, I have mountain biking, rock climbing, kayaking, um, wakeboarding within 15 minutes. Um, so you're surrounded by nature. And actually, I can't think of any other city in the world which has a world-class metropolis um, like Hong Kong, but also has world-class nature and lifestyle and leisure pursuits right on the doorstep. Um, I, when I lived in London, I'd have to travel an hour and a half to go mountain biking. Here, I can cycle 10 minutes to the trails and, and go uh, without even uh, getting on a car or a train. So the, the lifestyle factor of Hong Kong, um, when you're thinking about as a place to set up business, to live, uh, whether you have a family or you don't, is, is fantastic. Um, I recently had my first baby here. It's an incredibly family-friendly city. Um, the healthcare system here is second to none. Um, it rivals NHS in terms of quality and cost. Um, and just as a city and, um, with a very, very, very um, strong safety aspect as well as a new parent, that's also something which makes life much more enjoyable here um, and a place I would thoroughly recommend, not just from a professional perspective, but from a personal perspective. Sherwin, thank you. you know, okay, I, I changed the subject a little bit. You know. um, since you're already in Hong Kong for several years, living here for several years, um, did you get any government support or any funding schemes that, to help you to start your company? Yeah, uh, absolutely, and um, it, it, there are almost too many schemes to list or, or talk about, um, and a lot of them are industry-specific. Um, so one that obviously is very applicable um, to myself was the recycling fund, which uh, we have here in Hong Kong, but equally the reindustrialization fund was applicable. Um, it was actually a question of which one do I choose as opposed to is there one that's applicable. Um, so there are actually four or five applicable funds, um, all focused on um, developing uh, both the construction industry, the manufacturing industry, and the recycling industry. Um, so uh, it, it was actually you know, like being a kid in a candy store in terms of uh, wh you know, which one do I choose. Um, and you know, I think, that again, that's something which sets Hong Kong apart from 
um, anywhere else I looked at is um, that government support. You, you, you know that the government is trying to push you to succeed as opposed to putting bureaucracy and administration uh, ahead of you to, uh, to slow you down. So it really feels like you've got you know, a, a partner who is vested in making you push fa as fast as possible and succeed um, as, as best you can because that benefits the entire business community and Hong Kong. So, so Sherwin, so did you say that, you know, even though you don't have a track record as a, as a mature or, or, or yeah. old company, that you are a totally new company, you still are subject to the government funding? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so, it, and, and again, that, that's, that's something which I was personally surprised at in that it's, it's not there to support Hong Kong established companies who have been here and been operating. It's here to help entrepreneurs and in innovators. Um, and I think, again, going back to the real uh, genesis of what uh, Hong Kong is trying to do is foster innovation. Um, and you know, it, it, whether it's financial support or the networking support, um, and actually from an expats community uh, support, it's fantastic. You have people who are willing to give you advice, willing to talk you through their experiences, just because you, 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 you're not from here. And that kind of soft support is just as important as the more sort of hard formal support you get via the government and uh, industrial organizations. Thank you, Sherwin. You know. uh, Jimmy, I have a, 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 a difficult question for you. All right. <laughs> All right. Some people may think you know, that, uh, that we have uh, many uh, uh, Western people are leaving Hong Kong. You know. But on the contrary, you know, I heard over the last two years, a lot of uh, French people, Italian people are moving to Hong Kong, start up their small restaurant, and things like that, you know. Can you tell me the truth, what is happening? Well, I'm not sure if I can accurately describe uh, what the truth is, but uh, based on my experience and observations, uh, honestly, in the last one year or so, uh, um, Hong Kong has been troubled by various issues, uh, social unrest, the tensions between the U.S. and China, and now COVID-19. So economically, uh, it is very challenging for uh, Hong Kong at this moment. Um, so of course, we have seen companies uh, closing down or relocating. But at the same time, while we are talking to prospective investors around the world, uh, we still see a lot of interest from uh, companies and investors from different markets uh, really looking forward to uh, coming here, setting up their businesses. Just now, uh, because of the travel restrictions, it's less convenient for them to uh, physically come here and do the business setup. But the interest is there, uh, especially as I mentioned, uh, the GBA development presenting a lot of opportunities for uh, companies uh, coming from across different sectors. So we see strong, keen interest uh, from potential investors. And for some individual entrepreneurs, uh, uh, they are willing to uh, uh, make the move. Uh, we have also seen, uh, especially, uh, uh, like our expatriates uh, having lived in Hong Kong for uh, maybe a few years and recently decided to uh, start up their own businesses in Hong Kong, uh, restaurants yes, or yes. other uh, digital uh, related uh, concepts, marketing, because this part is also going very fast. Uh, partly driven by the pandemic. Uh, you know, people are changing their working habits, more working from home, uh, virtual meetings and, and all that, uh, which has created huge demand for digital services, uh, remote services. So, and also uh, uh, the government is uh, enhancing funding support for Hong Kong-based companies 
uh, subsidizing them to acquire new technologies to do their business, uh, to upgrade the business, to uh, uh, maintain operations during the pandemic. So this is also a driving force uh, to create business opportunities for this kind of digital marketing uh, creative companies. Um, so we are seeing uh, entrepreneurs venturing into that space as well. Um, so I think uh, uh, it's normal to see companies uh, come and go, uh, but for sure we haven't seen a massive exodus, as some people <laughs> said, see, yes, yes. of uh, companies here or expats here. Um, and as I mentioned in my presentation, every year we collaborate with uh, the Census and Statistics Department to do a survey on foreign companies in Hong Kong. Uh, usually the data collection uh, work is done during summertime, so it will be started very soon and uh, probably in, in Q3 or early Q4, uh, the government will announce uh, the results. So at that time, we see the objective data, uh, how many companies, foreign companies, operating in Hong Kong this year compared with last year. But again, from my observations, I haven't really seen you know, a huge, a significant outflows of capital or companies yeah. out of Hong Kong. I'm not sure if uh, uh, other panelists uh, share my, yeah. uh, my view, but that's obviously, uh, uh, definitely uh, my, my observation. Thank you, Jamie. Catherine, you know anything to echo about uh, Jimmy's comment? Yeah. Um I think uh, we do receive inquiries from overseas uh, for setting up the presence in GBA or in Hong Kong every day. So um, still the momentum still, um, they are still have the momentum to have the presence being set up in GBA, m probably because of the, the market scale uh, and also the opportunities and potentials in the GBA area uh, with the you know, significant amount of the populations and also the, uh, the GBA created in the GBA area. So Hong Kong definitely is, is one of the hottest you know, uh, point for them to have their uh, first, first spot, first set up. Because uh, Hong Kong have uh, treaties with the mainland China that provide a lot of uh, tax treaty protections uh, for the income set both in Hong Kong and in China. So that's why I think, um, as I mentioned, we do receive calls and also the inquiries from all over the world every day uh, for you know, um, trying to you know, um, s uh, having their investment holding structures that arranged it, uh, having their business expansions planned that in Hong Kong to cover not just the mainland China area, but also for the Southeast Asia. Thank yeah. you, Kevin. So now I still have a couple more minutes. So why don't we, the, uh, we, with the panelists, you know, we can ask each other some questions. If you like, Sherwin, you have any other, any question? So today we have uh, three or four experts in here in the different <laughs> business sectors, you know. So you're welcome to ask any questions, shall we? Um, I guess well, one, of, one of the um, uh, questions I have, uh, and that's it's actually because I, I was asked this question by, by a friend from Europe who was looking to um, find a job opportunities uh, here in Hong Kong. Um, so he asked me what, what's the best, uh, and this is not as a fresh graduate, as an experienced um, uh, individual, uh, what's the best way if you are looking for job opportunities here to plug into the right people to speak to and find out what's available? Um, obviously the obvious one, a recruitment agents, um, but I think um, Jimmy, you alluded to um, going via InvestHK to connect to job opportunities. So I mean, that's, a, that's actually something that would be helpful for people who are looking for uh, not only job opportunities, but you know, maybe also you know, um, speaking to other entrepreneurs who are based here and um, getting the benefit of their experience. Um, so I mean, you know, I guess what, what formal channels are there for people to um, you know, get connected into those opportunities or those networks? Say a few words. Uh, I think uh, I, we do encourage uh, our, our professionals interested in uh, knowing more about the Hong Kong market uh, to come speak to us. Uh, do utilize Invest Hong Kong as a resource, as a platform, because uh, we are given by the chief executive a new task. Uh, so now 
in addition to uh, extracting investments, we are also being tasked to uh, extracting talents. So uh, we welcome speaking the opportunity of speaking to uh, foreign talents who are interested in Hong Kong, are uh, happy to get, con get them connected with uh, not only recruitment agencies, but also people, as you mentioned, Sherwin, uh, experienced entrepreneurs here to share experience and, and uh, success tips for success, uh, uh, you know, uh, developing business or looking for uh, uh, jobs in Hong Kong. And uh, we work also closely with uh, our good friends at uh, Science Park and other government agencies to introduce potential career opportunities. Um, so I just encourage them to uh, come talk to us, you know, thank being you, a one-stop shop. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, so I want to ask Edward, you know, Sure. Since, I mean, your, your counterpart, you know, Cyberport, you know, also is a, have a very similar nature, you know. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us, you know, if, if uh, the foreign students or foreign graduate or what they want to start up the company, what would be the, two, the major difference between Cyberport and Science Park? Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, I would say uh, we cover a broader range of technologies. For instance, uh, um, Cyberport focuses more on the digital technologies. That's why they are called Cyberport. But we also have a lot of hardware companies, biotech companies, microelectronics companies. So, and they, those companies tend to be based in our park. So, number one, there's number two is um, now a lot of businesses they do business in China, right? In Shenzhen, across the border. And our location, even if you just take the train, it's like 30 minutes from the border. Oh, so, it's very close to Shenzhen. There are many people in our park who commute daily like Catherine, <laughs> but before uh, COVID-19, of course, like uh, between Shenzhen and, and Hong Kong every day. So if your business have some ch uh, mainland China component, especially in Guangdong province, then maybe we are more conveniently located. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, one more follow-on question. You know, I know in, in Science Park, you have uh, many biotech uh, companies. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why, you know, why, why Hong Kong is uh, becoming so popular in biotech, you know, because uh, 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 that used to be some uh, in, in the Western world, you know, the biotech, you know, why, why so popular in Hong Kong biotech? Oh, I, I think, uh, well, number one, uh, of course, we have very good universities, especially the medical sciences, the biological sciences. Uh, our university is very good. They have a lot of good spin-offs. Number two, I think, uh, is the listing rules uh, by Hong Kong Exchange, right? Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Now, pre-revenue companies, uh, they can get listed in Hong Kong, and I... And I believe that now Hong Kong is the second biggest fundraising center for biotech Hong companies. Hong Kong is the second biggest in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, around the world. So uh, the first is Nasdaq in New York. So, 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 so we're quickly catching up. And I think people say that over time, we will probably be the first in the world. Yeah. Okay, so any uh, bioscientists, uh, so, uh, so you're welcome to come in and work for Hong Kong, you know. All right, so uh, let me see, you know, we still can have a... Uh, I will throw one more question to my audience, you know, before I open up to the, uh, to the audience. Uh, Catherine, you know, uh, people ask, you know, uh, the personnel, you know, working regularly across the border between Hong Kong and uh, other city, Greater Bay areas, you know. So actually, what kind of uh, income tax would they apply? You know, are they, they apply to the uh, uh, Hong Kong tax or, or the China tax, you know. So how, how to do the uh, arrangement, you know? Well, very technical questions. But this is um, um, the questions that we receive from our clients every day. So it's all depending on the employment contract that you signed it. Uh, if you are signed it with the Hong Kong company, say, for example, um, but uh, you have to commute every day uh, to Hong Kong, and sometimes you perform the services in China. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a tax treaties that are arranged between mainland China and Hong Kong. And in fact, um, uh, Chinese uh, tax authorities, they further relax the counting, counting rule uh, for counting the days in China. Right now, if you spend less than 24 hours in China, they don't count you any days in China. So um, we all know that according to the tax treaty, if you spend more than 183 days, uh, in one jurisdictions like in China, mainland China, then you will be subject to the, the tax in China. But given the relaxations on the counting days, even you are working from Monday to Friday, it probably uh, counts you only four days a week. 
So add it up together, including those holidays, then very likely you are not required to pay any tax in China. But because with the employments in Hong Kong, then you are going to pay the tax in, in Hong Kong instead of in China. So the tax cost is, is reduced significantly. Even you are required to travel in and out China, comparing with the old days. Okay, thank yeah. you, thank you. I, this is uh, always a, uh, a sensitive question that people ask, you know. So, so if you know the rules, you know, you go in and go out within the same day, you know, it doesn't count, you know. I think that will help a lot of the, the people, you know, to, to, uh, to how, how to arrange their tax planning, yes. Uh, Sherwin, you know, I, I have a, 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 a question about the, the topics today, GBA, you know. You, do you have any plan going into GBA, you know? Do you think it's difficult, you know, so uh, uh, what, what would be the hurdles that you think you will be facing? Um, it's a good question. I think, um, you know, the, the concept of uh, and the, the specter of the GBA, I think for a lot of people, especially based in the UK, um, it will be one that they're not particularly familiar with. They may have heard about it, but I guess the, the nuances, the details um, are still relatively unknown um, for, for a lot of people. Uh, and actually, I'm looking into it myself. Um, and uh, again, part of the reason I wanted to be based in Hong Kong was firstly because of the world-class infrastructure here. Um, to go from zero to establishing yourself in an environment like Hong Kong is it's not business is never easy, but it's, it's as easy as it can be. Um, but then again, the next step after that, by being incorporated in Hong Kong, by building your networks in Hong Kong, you're almost you're a few steps closer to the GBA already, just by having established a business here. And, um, and that's what I've found so far is when I've uh, talked about my my product and my business here. Um, the talk has not just been about the Hong Kong market, it's been about the GBA market. Um, so whilst I'm focusing on launching the product here in Hong Kong, it's with a very definitive view of then taking that product into, and the know-how and the technology into the Greater Bay Area. And actually, the, the more I look into it, the more um, it's, it's very clear that there's a very definitive and very deliberate integration of um, not just connecting very disparate cities together, but actually making the administration uh, seamless, making the travel seamless, making the, um, the capital seamless as well. So when I speak to my bank, um, you know, and I talk to them about wanting to do business in the GBA, they have that infrastructure in place. They have, the, they have that connectivity in place. Uh, when I speak to my tax advisors, again, it, the dots are connected, so it's it, it, all of the infrastructure, all of the pathways are well laid out to actually make that integration as seamless as possible. Sure, you know, thank you, you know, thank you for. In fact, this is a, a very, a very helpful that you explain to our UK audience about the GBA concept. So, can I ask you a little secret? You know, so how many? companies has been approaching you for the business content already. I know since you are in the early operation phase. Yeah, um, it's, it's, yeah thankfully, uh, yeah, I'm a lot. Um, <laughs> and, and that's because um, if you have a good idea here in Hong Kong, uh, people are willing to listen to it. Um, and again, that, that's, that was something quite differentiated that I found here is um, you don't have to knock really hard to open doors people open doors if you if you have a good idea um, and in that regard it's, it's been it's been you know, a, a great place for, for me to you know, it, drum up that kind of interest in my business um, because frankly the proximity helps you know I, I don't have to travel great distances um, I don't have to you know um, spend a lot a lot of time to visit you know people who are actually based in probably a 15 20 minute uh, travel corridor for me um, and, and actually, again, that con that connectivity. Once you have spoken to one party that's interested, that party will talk to other interested right. parties about your product. So that that is, is it's a it's a dynamo effect. Uh, once you've planted your seed, actually, it you know, it, it it will drum up that kind of interest, uh, that connectivity, you know, n with your push, but also from the people who, that you've you've already spoken to. So um, we 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 haven't. Mass produce our first product yet, but we've got 
people lined up wanting uh, test batches um, to um, to try out for themselves. Um, so again, it, by virtue of being a very small geographic area by comparison to some of the larger cities, you can connect with people a lot more quickly and you know, generate that interest um, in a very efficient manner. Okay, so when you know. Okay, I have a, a question for the uh, uh, for Edward on the science part. You know, sure. so the question is: uh, Are there any programs tailor made for the university graduates who would like to start up a business in Hong Kong? Oh, absolutely. So, so um, there's a program called. Uh, are you talking about university students based in Hong Kong or abroad? Uh, abroad. Abroad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, we have po uh, sub. Uh, support programs targeting companies in different stages, from uh, entrepreneurs who just have an idea to entrepreneurs who already sort of have a have a working product or working prototype. So, for instance, uh, we have a program called uh, uh, Step. So, what that is is um, we give um, entrepreneurs one hundred thousand Hong Kong dollars to explore the idea, and we give them office space, we give them the networking support, etc., so that they can. Uh, really uh, 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 improve the idea and turn that into a viable business, and then after that they can join our incubation program. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let me see. You know, this is a uh, this question is for 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 Jimmy. You know, so um, so during the pandemic, you know, uh, so we I think is uh, is uh, the startup company. We do not want to risk to travel back to Hong Kong. You know, can we still apply the government funding scheme if I am located in UK? I think the uh, main uh, requirement that is that you have a Hong Kong registered company. Company. Yes. Uh, so whether or not you are physically present in Hong Kong uh, is not a real issue, uh, but. You need to have a Hong Kong registered company, uh, and uh, and uh, obviously a, a a genuine business operation, and then uh, I think the Hong Kong government is also uh, relaxing. Um, in the past, uh, we might have more stringent requirements in terms of uh, the business experience of the applicant, uh, but now because of the pandemic, we are actually making it easier even for newer companies to apply for a lot of different funding schemes. So uh, I think that's the uh, major uh, consideration. Okay, thank you. So uh, we have uh, two more minutes left, you know. So uh, any, any audience, if you have any question, please post it up, you know. If in case, you know, we don't have enough time, you know, so uh, we will still always reply your questions, you know. Okay, so before we end, you know, showing, you know, maybe, you know, I, I would like to, uh, the last minute or so, you know, I, I want you to just, to share with the audience, you know, what is your general feeling? You know that you have been living in Hong Kong for how many years? Um, three years in three this years. Uh, right. stint so, is there any advice previously. to the UK uh, graduates? You know, any advice, recommendation? You know, that come to Hong Kong and work? You know. Yeah, I guess um, for for the graduates, um, I would say it's a it's a fantastic place to gain um, a very different experience than than you would get in London. Um, uh, obviously, London is a, is a big city. It's fantastic in terms of its um, its size and opportunities. Uh, but if you look at where um, the global growth uh, is going to be, um, where business is moving at its fastest pace, uh, it's undoubtedly in Asia. Um, and in terms of the ability to um, be at the heart of that growth and gain um, Frankly, first-hand experience. Um, it's it's a very different place in um, compared to London. And one of the things I loved about working here, even in, um, in in the investment banking days, was the amount of responsibility I could take for uh, the business. Um, because um, in London, you are a small cog in a big machine. Uh, here, um, you're. If you want to be at the forefront of your deal, if you want to be running your deals, that opportunity is there for you. Um, and it's in that regard where, um, when I say it's uh, there's, there's a much more entrepreneurial spirit here. Um, if you're if you're a graduate, fresh out of university, looking to gain as much experience uh, as you can, um, 
and the financial markets here, again, if just purely talking about finance, uh, are developing in many different ways, many different products, you know, going back to um, things like the uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange, their particular rules around listing. Uh, in my particular sector, um, the Hong Kong uh, Stock Exchange is actually trying to make itself and is successfully making itself the green financing hub of Asia. So when you're looking at developments in finance, um, it, it's always linked to other industries as well, whether it's in the biotech sector or whether it's in the sustainability sector. Hong Kong wants to connect connect all of those um, different aspects of uh, finance, of industry, of technology, um, and really help create you know, a, a, a new economy for Hong Kong. Um, so I would say that that's where Hong Kong um, presents a very unique uh, prospect and opportunity. Uh, and then you add to that its connectivity into the Greater Bay Area, which as it develops and as it integrates further and further will make it you know, unparalleled, I think, in terms of size, scale, and opportunity for anybody looking to work out here or establish a business out here. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you for the guest speakers. You know. So I pass the time back to the MC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the invaluable insights from our panelists. And also, thank you very much for your participation, including all the viewers online. The video of the webinar today will be posted on the FHKI website for public access shortly. We hope to see you all very soon. Goodbye.